everyone, I'm Tom Slavik and welcome to News In Depth and today I have with me in the studio two uh, lovely and um, handsome uh, lady and uh, young gentleman and I have uh, with me Angela Farron. How are you Angela? Good, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank and you. And you're local here from Amador County. Yes, I am. Okay, and we have uh, Spencer Aller. Good to be with you, Tom. Okay, and most people uh, know that uh, Spencer's dad, Rico, has uh, represented them here in uh, California, and you're from Calaveras County. Yep, I grew up in San Andreas, and my dad ter served uh, two terms in the Assembly and then one term in the Senate before uh, retiring from politics in uh, 04. Okay, so, you know, young people, it's uh, a lot going on in the world today. Are young people interested in what's going on today? You know, unfortunately, I don't think I think young people care more about what happened last week on Jersey Shore than they do what happened last week in the legislative branch. But it's it's really important that I think that we focus on what's happening now because in 20 to 30 years, when we have our own families and uh, we're out in the big scary world by ourselves, the stuff that's happening now is really going to affect us. So you're concerned 20 to 30 years. Well, now, you know, way. that's what you say. Okay, I, 10 I years too. <laughs> How about you, Spencer? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, basically what Angela said, we have a government that's mounting a $16 trillion debt, and that's just today. We don't know what it's going to be in 10 years, and our generation is going to have to pay that off. Absolutely. Okay, so you got, you, both of you sound like you're uh, in, from the conservative side of the aisle. Um, yes. You might not agree with that word, for all I know. Do you have a word for yourself to describe yourself, your politics? I would call myself a conservative. I am affiliated with the Mother Load Tea Party. I don't. Ne that doesn't necessarily mean you know, I'm a, you know, Bible pounding conservative that thinks that everybody should be a certain way or whatever. But I do think I believe in the Tea Party's two basic principles that are: we need a smaller government with more fiscal responsibility. Those are the greatest things that I believe for the government. Okay, and Spencer, I know you're with the gun owners of uh, California, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, what's the mission of the Gun Owners of California? Uh, well, really what we do is we lobby for the Second Amendment. Our executive director, uh, Sam Paredes, he's down at the Capitol at least once a week doing something, talking to legislators, going to committee hearings. Um, you'd be surprised what's going on in the legislature right now. We're, we're tracking about 15 anti-gun bills that they're trying to pass right now. The two big important ones that we're really fighting right now are, the first one is AB 711, which will ban all lead ammunition for hunting in California um, because of the condors. And uh, I haven't seen very many condors up in Lassen County, uh, so I don't think that this is a really a wise decision that they're trying to make this blanket law for the entire state for something that really only matters in their habitat. Okay, is gun owners of California basically just concerned with the uh, laws in California or do they also lobby at the uh, federal level? Well, no, we just lobby at the state level. Okay, so basically you're both uh, a little bit concerned in uh, local politics or maybe larger as state, statewide? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a student? Yeah, I go to Folsom Lake. Okay, and yourself? Yeah, I go to Chico State. How long have you been in Chico? Uh, this is going to be my third year coming up. Okay, so. uh, I imagine at your age it's okay for me to ask you how old you are? Yeah, I'm 19. <laughs> okay, so you're 19 and you're going to be a junior? Mm hmm Okay, and uh, how about you? Uh, and I'm 19 and I will, uh, and I, well, I don't, I don't really have a school year. I'm just taking one class at okay. Folsom Lake right now. Right, but I'm so a full-time so employee got your, for gun your, owners. Your feet in the water and everything like that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Figure out what I want to do. Get some general education out of okay. the way. What do you do for the gun owners? You have an official. My official title is online media coordinator. Um, I uh, manage the websites, manage the Facebook, and that kind of thing. And, and then come do things like this every once so in a while. So you're the young guy they look to for the <laughs> tech uh, yeah. savviness. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, we got a bunch of older folks did in, you, the, uh, in the office. Did you? How did you pick up on uh, on doing that sort of? Stuff? Well, I since my dad was in politics since I was really young. You know, he was really involved with gun owners. He helped them out a lot. They helped him out a lot. And so ever since I was little, I really just wanted to. I wanted to work for gun owners because okay. I wanted to do something good for the cause. Okay, I think we have a feel for maybe some of the stuff from the areas might, we might go into. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be with our two guests, and we'll be talking about uh, local politics, I reckon. Thank you. Stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm with Angela. See your last name again. Farron. Okay, and... Spencer Aller. Okay, and... Uh, one more thing, for the record, you were a Miss Amador <coughs> contestant as well, right? I was. I was 
2012 first runner-up for Miss Amador. Right. Okay. 2012. Okay. Let's go back. You're both in school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a lot of times I'm in the field. Maybe you've known that. And I, uh, I usually don't ask kids like, "Hey, what do you want to be?" You know, uh, I don't know why. I just feel like you know it puts a lot of pressure on them or anything like that. But what do you guys want to be? I would like to, I'm currently I'm studying animal science and agricultural economics. Uh, I got, I've gotten advice from adults since I was younger. Take business classes, take business classes, take business classes. That's but I, yeah, you know, but I love animals. So I would really like to go in the animal field, possibly into ranch management, nutrition, genetics, something along those lines. Okay, so, okay, you're an animal girl and you'd like to get in the business of uh, agricultural business. Yes. And especially, I guess the Food animal. Food production animals. So Beef? Beef, especially, is my passion. Okay, and is this what you're doing? Is this where you're starting off at? Um, that is the million-dollar question, what okay. I want to do with my life. Uh, well, okay. I'm taking Are you interested in the, the techies time. thing? Is that what brought yeah, you into that? Yeah, uh, that's, that's what gun owners initially hired me on for, is, uh, is you know, website-type stuff. Um, but really, I have no idea what, what I'm, the future holds for me. Who does? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So anyway, now the two of you, I was out at the fair, and I was at, I'm not sure it was Thursday or Friday. The two of you were working the at the uh, tea party booth. Yeah. Right. What day was it? It was Sunday. <laughs> okay. Jog my mind. It was Sunday. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it was Sunday, and uh, why were why were you there? Well, obviously you're in the tea party. Did you do a volunteer shift? Was yeah, I really, I really like being part of the tea party because um, I get, I like getting talk, getting to talk to older people about, okay. um, you know, older people have much more wisdom that they can share with me about politics and what's going on in the world. And then when I learn that stuff, I can take it back to my peers and be like, hey, this is the stuff that we need to care about. This is the stuff that's going on because, you know, people my age don't care as much as they should. Okay, those that do, what your peers, what uh, what are they interested in? What uh, what are they concerned about? Actually, right before coming on the show a couple of days ago, I sent out you know Facebook asking what do people care about, and the people who are educated and who are following the news, their concerns are endless, honestly. Um, hmm. But on a more personal level, I think a common a common part of conversations between college students is, well, I can't afford it, I have to pay for tuition, I can't afford it, I have to make rent this month. So a common concern for us is the ever-rising cost of tuition and also the lack of government help with um, tuition costs and stuff. And I know there's grants and I know there's loans, but it doesn't always cover everything that college students have to pay for in college, not only tuition, but books and living expenses and stuff like that. Okay. So, so in a way, even though you're a conservative, you kind of look to government to help you. Well, see, also. that's the thing is that I don't think the government is helping enough. And honestly, not to be a pessimist, but you can't depend completely on the government to help you out. So I think, you know, as Spencer said, he's taking classes, but he doesn't know what he wants to do. And I think that a lot of kids just fall into the routine of, I have to go to college, that's what's expected of me. But you don't. If you don't know what you want to do, take a couple classes that you can't afford. Don't depend on the government to help you out because you don't want to come out of college, you know, up to your eyeballs in debt and not knowing what you want to do with your life. Okay. So college is expensive. There's yes. a lot of people that are coming out of college. And uh, frankly, it seems like uh, there's not jobs for them, quite a few college level people are, uh, you know, working way below their uh, skill sets. Right, because they have to, because they have these great debts that they have to pay off. And I mean, the cost of living is so great. You have to take whatever job you can get. And if that's not necessarily in your field, I mean, you can't be picky. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go to you for a minute, and we'll switch subject uh, a bit. Okay. Well, let me let me not let me let me just stay with you for a little bit more. And so, economics and the economic uh, playing field, if you would. I mean, the whole field. Not many, not as many jobs. Uh, the jobs that you might be prepared for aren't there, and uh, and then the cost of getting that at the same time has occurred to a lot of people that maybe college isn't uh, you know the ticket to the future. I think that's I think that's you know very possible. A lot of people just assume that they need a college education in order to get anywhere in the world. But you can learn just as much actually working in a field that you want to go into. For example, I had a job at the at an organic dairy for a year and a half and I can say I learned about as much working and actually putting it into practice as I would have in a classroom. 
So if somebody, if somebody didn't want to go to college, couldn't afford to go to college, didn't want to depend on the government for assistance, then, I mean, if they just get into their own field and work their way up and climb the ladder, I'm sure they could learn just as much as a college student. Okay. I want to go on record with saying I, I think, you know, it's really, college is a really a great thing to, uh, to, to take well around you and also, like you would say, well, I'm not sure what I should do. Mm -hmm. The first two years is kind of general, so yeah. it's good to get maybe the AA under your belt. That would be my advice yeah, yeah. at the moment. But anyway, uh, I'm not here to advise you guys. <laughs> uh, you're here to advise me a little bit. How did what what is the concerns in that you see from your generation that uh, is bothersome? You know what I see is just a general lack of interest in in what's going on, and these political issues that are going on today are really going to affect our lives when we're older. And we and I think we need to get a lot more people in our generation uh, a lot more involved um, because we have government, like I said, that's mounting this debt. And we're going to have to be the ones that pay it off. Uh, a, a big issue that I have is the the, the I'm, I don't want to part uh, tote party lines here, but the the healthcare issue, and we have we have rising costs that's caused by the government. The government has caused the prices to rise, and we have people saying that government is more government is the answer. And uh, I think our our general message is we need to, to to be really cautious about what we think the government's role really should be in our lives. Okay, I want to ask both of you now because uh, in a few months, uh, Obamacare, affordable health care, uh, is going to take effect. Are you confused about what what's going to take effect? I, you know, honestly, it's even if you turn on the news, I don't think anybody really knows what Obamacare is because if you turn on the news, there's all this propaganda. Oh, the IRS commissioner doesn't want Obamacare. Oh, Congress doesn't have to have Obamacare, so why are they pushing it through? And I, I think it's a, it is a confusing subject that I'm honestly not very clear on. So, yeah, there, I don't think there is any one person, uh, probably in the entire world, that f fully understands this Obamacare law. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to, I guess. Uh, I mean, not necessarily other issues, for, but let's stay with the economy, if we could. Do you see any um, bright, uh, do you see any light at the end of uh, this tunnel? Is the Let me put it this way. Do people your age, do they feel the economy is getting better right now? You know, that's a good question. I think it depends on who you ask. Um, at our age, we all we feel is just, you know, the tug of the purse strings because we are experiencing so many increased expenses and you know most of my friends are my friends at Chico so right. we're all you know experiencing rising cost in tuition cost of living gas prices and stuff like that but not to be a pessimist at all I believe there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel always it's just you know a matter of how long the tunnel is <laughs> okay okay I'm glad to hear that and uh, how about you well um, I think that uh, we're facing a lot of issues as far as like with our state legislature they're trying to pass all of these ridiculous laws I think we need to get a lot more people involved following what's going on with these um, the, the other the other issue I wanted to talk about was uh, SB 374 which this it's a bill that's going to make all semi-automatic uh, rifles with a detachable magazine will be illegal if you have one you have to register it with the Department of Justice um, and this and on the topic of the economy this is going to be a huge blow to the to the market of firearms and in, in California because those are really really popular firearms there's a lot of people that own those and there's gonna be a lot of people who are are not gonna register them uh, like they have to um, I mean I, I definitely encourage you to follow the law and get it registered but a lot of people aren't even gonna realize that they have to do it and so it's gonna create criminals and uh, and uh, and it's going to send all of those guns into the black market. Okay, so in a way, maybe uh, I go out with the with little knowledge I have about weapons and that. So even if it's like a 22 long rifle that has yep. a, a capacity clip, I believe in California, is 10 rounds. Right, right. That will become you. That will become an assault weapon. Yes. Yes. And meaning, therefore, that you have to register it. If you already own one, you have to register it, but you will never be able to transfer it again. Uh, so if you die government owns it. You don't get to pass it to your kids, 
um, and the government will try and come I think and you're right it. in saying that a lot of people don't know about this. I really don't know about it. How far along is this uh, to becoming law? Well, SB 374 has passed uh, the Senate, and uh, the uh, the legislature is currently on recess, so they'll be hearing uh, they'll be hearing more of it in the assembly uh, in the next couple of months. So we'll have a, a definitive answer of whether or not it'll pass in it's late September. Okay. Well, when your dad, I don't want to bring your dad up and put you in a shadow or anything, but <laughs> let me just put time wise. Uh, there was a time when, although uh, Republicans say weren't in a majority, mm -hmm. uh, they could at least uh, they they didn't face a supermajority from the opposite party. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you feel about that? How do you feel about? Well, they need a two-thirds majority in the uh, in both houses in order to pass uh, tax increases. Um, but luckily, in the Senate, we just won a special election down in the. The uh, 16th Senate District, I believe, which ended their the, their supermajority. Andy Vidak won that Senate seat down there. Okay, so, okay, so. So thankfully, that's that's not as much of an issue anymore because we have that one seat. Well, isn't it something that today that uh, one seat, uh, sometime locally, uh, uh, state wise, and at the federal level, is uh, what we're all looking for to either save us or, uh, from maybe our point of view, sink us. Uh, and I think you brought that up a little bit when we had talked right before we went on the air that that uh, politics has maybe never seemed as divisive as today. Right, especially because of the two-party system. I think it is the biggest divider between people in our country, even bigger than religion, because people tend to take their political views and cling to them. And you know, it's just like they do with religion. Just like they do with religion, but it, it can be good or bad. And for the most part, I would say that it's not the most beneficial thing for people to do. It's probably better for us to work together. But on the local level, I mean, I think a lot of people in Amador County are You know, a time when we were probably as divisive would be, say, during the Civil War. And uh, if you take up, the, say, the slavery issue, some people would say the Civil War wasn't about that. But let's just maybe get past that and say, well, second thing maybe was going on there. Uh, how do you take, how would a person compromise an uncompromisable position? I mean, I, that's, that's why I kind of think we're here, and, uh, and that's why I don't see an easy way out. I'm not quite sure. By uncompromisable position, like what, for example? Well, I guess uh, let's take, say, the gun issue. It would seem that the uh, left and uh, the right are at odds, uh, Second Amendment rights, that uh, we say, well, you know, it's kind of here in the Constitution, and that we have workarounds. And uh, how do you how do you uh, give your position up? One side seems to say we want you to compromise, but only if it's you come over to our side. Right. And and uh, I don't know. Well, our our government knows. I guess, and from the other point of view, if we go to say Second Amendment rights, I say there's really nothing to compromise. It's it's right here. It's like the First Amendment says, you know, right. and the Second That's Amendment is here. It's pretty clear. Then we have some amendments that stuff is in there and it's not even written in there. So, mm -hmm. to give it to you. Well, uh, we have, the government knows that they can't come into our house and just take all of our stuff because they know that we have firearms and that we will be able to defend ourselves. So they picked a new tactic. They, when there's a problem, some sort of problem in society, whether, whether government created or not, there's people react and uh, politicians come to you know come to the light and say we're going to make this legislation that's going to solve this problem when really they're trying to win brownie points with their constituents it's not it's not about actually problem solving at all it's about looking good in for for their constituents so that they can get elected again uh, and so we have this problem reaction and then solution and and the solutions that they create, in fact, create more problems. That the government gets to step up and be the solution. It's a Hegelian dialect. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And which is, you you bring up a problem, and then the other side has to acknowledge the problem, and then you make up a a uh, way to fix it. Mm. And and so this is the problem. The person that, that I makes the problem always moves it the ball to his side of mm -hmm. the field. Right, right. And I I, I would I would argue that. People, people on the left, they're 
they're, they're totally okay with these compromises that are, that are halfway between a solution so that it's really, it really doesn't solve any problems, but it makes both parties happy. Uh, it doesn't actually solve anything. It just makes constituents happy. We'll see. I mean, I don't think, I think that's a general pattern in the left, but it's not really like a division when you're talking about compromise. It's, I don't think it should be a division of party. I think it should be the essence of what the country was founded upon, and that is limited government. Okay. The whole mm -hmm. reason that our forefathers established the United States was America, of America was to get away from the overbearing government of England. So, I mean, if we're sticking to original values of what this country stands for, we do want limited government, and it's not necessarily the government's job to solve this problem that Spencer's mm -hmm. talking about, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I guess... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is the, I guess, is the government out of the box that the Constitution attempted to put it in? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. George Washington said, uh, government is not eloquent. It is not reason. Like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. And I think that we have to really think about government like a, like a wildfire. We, the fire has gone ablaze, and we need to start putting it out and get it in its place so that it can do what it's meant to do. Okay, let's uh, go with that, but I kind of see, okay, we're, we're saying that, and yet, maybe the compromise, and I don't know if compromise is right, but, but see, you're concerned with uh, how do I pay for my education, how do I do this and that, so you want to look to somebody to do that, probably looking to government to help you out or say, you know, maybe it's your job. I think the argument might be, uh, you know, we're going to benefit society as a whole so can you help us out so well it could be I mean personally I'm not gonna go out and say yes the government needs to budget more for education because I'm not a big proponent in depending upon the government for okay. your education I don't think we should be fully dependent on the government for anything I personally don't want to owe the government anything um, but the thing is is that um, it's just <sighs> pardon me it's just like it, a constant battle, I think, um, between the two parties, and it's not—it's not the fact that the government needs to budget more for education. It's the fact that we I mean, are budgeted it for so yes, terribly for everything else. Thank okay, you. we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, uh, we'll let both of them give a chance to uh, use a minute or two to uh, tell the public out there what they'd like to say. So stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network. TSPN.